Jamie Lynn Spears has just posted audio of her crying amid Britney's conservatorship controversy. The baby deletes his Instagram apology for being homophobic, and R. Kelly is set to stand trial today in New York City for his crimes. I'm going to tell you all about it right here on IO, but first, if you could do us a big favor and please tap that like button, we'd really appreciate it. And with that out of the way, let's begin. So, first things first, let's talk about this Jamie Lynn Spears audio. Thank you, baby. Many fans of Britney had accused Jamie Lynn of failing to support her sister during this long conservatorship. Especially with Britney calling out her entire family during her testimony, this really put the pressure on everyone that had stood by and watched the horrors that she had described. Even telling the court that her arrangement was so controlling that she was not even allowed to marry or have children. Recently, Jamie Lynn posted an audio clip to her Instagram stories where you can hear her sobbing to her three-year-old daughter Ivy. In the clip, you can just hear Jamie crying as her daughter comforts her saying, it'll be okay mom, it has to be okay. And through her tears, you can faintly hear Jamie Lynn responds saying thank you baby. And an account on Twitter called hiatus Britney reposted the audio and shared an interesting take though. On Twitter they said, Jamie Lynn can be heard crying in her latest Instagram story. Something definitely went down. Adding, it is extremely weird and forced of her to record herself crying and being comforted by her kid, but it shows that she's desperate because of something. I don't know what it is, but I'm living. Many of Britney's supporters are labeling Jamie Lynn as desperate for posting this audio, but in all honesty, she probably posted this to gain sympathy because every time she posted about her sister's conservatorship, she was attacked in the comment section. According to Jamie Lynn, she and her family have had multiple threats against their life made after Britney had exposed them. Here's the tricky thing with this situation though. I get that people are mad and frustrated with how Britney has been treated. But we need to remember that those who don't know history are destined to repeat it. Let's not take all of our frustrations out on Jamie Lynn, who has gotten to the point of crying on Instagram Live, just because she didn't do everything possible to help her sister. This is a distraction from who the real person in charge is. We have her dad saying that he is Britney Spears, and we have judges that hid certain information from the public eye. There are so many other people that had more of a devious hand in the trapping of Britney that focusing all of our attention on a sibling rivalry would be foolish. But I'd love to hear your your thoughts though on all of this, do you think that Jamie posted this to gain sympathy or is she just trying to be another distraction? I, I honestly would love to hear what you think in those comments. Now in other news, we need to talk about the fact that DaBaby just deleted his apology. During his performance last month at Rolling Loud in Miami, the 29 year old rapper was filmed asking fans to put their lighters up if they didn't have HIV, AIDS or another STD that made you die in 2-3 to three weeks. Plus he went on to say some other pretty homophobic stuff as well that I'd rather not repeat because mainly the editor will have to just beep out every other word so it is point at this time, you know, his quotes are everywhere if you're really that interested in seeing them. Many people took the social media though to blast the baby regarding these remarks and for spreading harmful misinformation about HIV. After he doubled down on what he said, music festivals began dropping him left and right. He was dropped by Lollapalooza and the Governor's Ball just to name a few. Now of course once this started affecting his wallet, he popped up with a very insincere and inadequate apology that was clearly written by his management team. In his apology he said, social media moves so fast that people want to demolish you before you even have the opportunity to grow, educate and learn from your mistakes. As a man who has had to make his own way from very difficult circumstances, having people I know publicly working against me, knowing that what I needed was education on these topics and guidance has been challenging. I appreciate the many people who came to me with kindness who reached out to me privately to offer wisdom, education and resources. That's what I needed and it was received. I want to apologize to the LGBTQ plus community for the hurtful and triggering comments I made. Again, I apologize for my misinformed comments about HIV AIDS and I know education on this is important. Love to all, God bless. The hilarious part about this apology though is that first line, social media moves so fast? Bro, this apology came two days after you doubled down and started reposting people that said you couldn't be cancelled. Then as soon as his bag got affected, he's like, I just need people to come at me with kindness. Just stop. Just stop it, please. Either way, that apology was deleted because it probably didn't save his career like he thought it would. Moving on though. Now in our last bit of news, the jury has been selected for the trial of singer R. Kelly and that trial will be taking place today, August 9th in New York City. The 54 year old R&B star whose real name is Robert Sylvester Kelly will be up against charges of racketeering, sexual exploitation of a child, forced labor, kidnapping, enticement and bribery. Kelly has been in police custody in Chicago since July 2019 with the prosecutors accusing him of running a criminal enterprise that will recruit underage girls for illegal sexual activities. Recently he was transported to the Federal Metropolitan Detention Center in Brooklyn just last month as he awaited trial. With the jury on the case being selected, this will mark the first phase of R. Kelly's trial proceedings and opening statements are set to take place on August 18th. What will certainly be difficult here though 
is making sure that the jurors remain impartial in light of the media coverage that will definitely be all over this case in the weeks to come. According to The Independent, Kelly will also be facing allegations of bribing an Illinois official back in 1994. At that time, he was attempting to get a fake ID for Aaliyah, who was only 15 at the time. He needed this fake ID though so that they could get married. However, because she lost her life in a plane crash in 2001, the court documents will be referring to her as Jane Doe number 1. US District Judge Ann Donnell said in a ruling, As a result, in an effort to shield himself from criminal charges related to his illegal sexual relationship with Jane Doe number 1, Kelly arranged to secretly marry her to prevent her from being compelled to testify against him in the future. Adding, It's clearly relevant and it clearly shows a motive for racketeering act number 1, so that is admissible. Plus, the charges do not stop there. Prosecutors will also be bringing forward other acts of alleged criminal behavior that dates back to 1991, which is directly relevant to and inextricably intertwined with the evidence of the crimes he's currently facing. Some of those criminal acts include the essay of a 17 year old boy who R. Kelly is said to have met in a Chicago McDonald's back in 2006. Prosecutors claim that he invited him to his home and asked him not to bring his family. Soon after, Kelly invited the boy, who will be identified as John Doe number one, over to his studio under the false pretense that he would be helping and mentoring him with his musical aspirations. The court papers also detail his disgusting behavior and goes on to say, Kelly also asked John Doe number one what he was willing to do to succeed in the music business and clarified that he wanted John Doe number one to engage in sexual contact with Kelly. With that backdrop, Kelly then engaged in sexual contact with John Doe number one in violation of Illinois law. So there's much, much more to this case than we first learned about and I guarantee that as this trial goes on, more victims of R. Kelly will come forward. With that though, let's check out some of your comments from the video titled, Influencer Loses 2 Million Followers Because of Her Mom. Kat says, a mom that thinks about her daughter's well-being and future instead of the money she can generate today, good for you, mama. Good for that mom indeed. And she's got way, 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 way more care for her child than most people on social media do. Michelle Sutton says, this mom is actually being a parent instead of allowing social media to take care of her teenager, proof that good parents still exist. I know, that's what, that was my biggest thing. I'm like, oh, faith in humanity restored. Just because you're a parent doesn't mean you need to be best friends with your kid. You actually shouldn't be best friends with your kid. You need to be looking out for their interests. What do I know though? I don't have kids. Roz805 says, a mom putting your kid's well-being first. What's shocking is that people find that shocking. Agreed. Alexis Van Aken says, a mom who understands what's best for her daughter's mental health and a daughter who understands her mom is trying to protect her. We love to see it. I know, I, I, I certainly love that her daughter didn't try to actually fight back on what her mom was saying and actually agreed with her, so that was really good. Salty Duchess says, kudos to mom who values her daughter's well-being and personal growth above internet, fame, and money. Again, couldn't give more praise to this mom for, for taking that big step. It must have been quite difficult and I'm sure for a few days she heard a lot of doors slamming, that's for sure. But guys, that is the end of today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I've been your host Johnny Rogers and until next time, stay classy YouTube, or at least try.